All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our virtual author visit. Today, we are so excited to have Kat Zhang. She is the author of Amy Wu and the, oops, and the Patchwork. Well, that's not working out at all. Amy Wu and the Patchwork Dragon. Um, it's a wonderful book about a little girl and her um, making a dragon her very own. Uh, so with that, I will go ahead and give it over to Kat if you'd like to begin. Hi, great. Thanks so much. I'm really excited to be with you guys today. Um, I do have a PowerPoint presentation, so I'm going to go ahead and try to share that. Let's see. Okay, that looks better this time. There we go. Yay. Good. Awesome. All right. Now, let's see if I can get this to play. Awesome. Okay, can you guys see it now? Yes. All right, great. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, I'm really excited to be here with you guys talking about Amy Wu and the Patrick Dragon. This is a really special book to me. I love sharing it with kids. I love sharing with readers. Um, and I really love talking about the story behind it too, because I think it's really special. Um, and it's something that everyone should learn about because making books is really cool. And when I was a kid, I had no idea how books were made, how picture books were made. Um, so I always love getting the chance to talk about it. So before I start, I wanted everybody to just think about in their mind what a dragon looks like to them. You know, is it big? Is it small? What color is it? Does it have wings? Can it fly or does it swim? Just think about all the things that say dragon to you and then put it aside for a little bit and we'll come back to it at the very end. So I did hear that a lot of you guys got a copy of Amy Wu and the Patrick Dragon to read at home, which is awesome. Um, but just in case some of you didn't or you haven't had a chance to read it yet or you just need a little refresher before we talk about the book, I did want to read the book with you guys together. So here we are. During story time, Miss Mary reads Amy's class a book about dragons. I love how on this page you can see that even the birds outside the windows are listening to Miss Mary's story. And Amy is here and she's so excited. Dragons that hoard treasure, dragons that breathe fire, dragons that fight knights in gleaming armor. Afterward, she tells everyone to make their own dragons. Make them special, she says. Make them yours. Sam draws a dragon with enormous teeth. He crafts the wings from postage stamps. Willa sculpts a dragon with a big fat belly. She strings daisies for the tail. Amy paints a dragon with a long thin body. It has horns like a stag and claws like an eagle. Are you sure that's a dragon? Asks Sam. It doesn't look like a dragon, adds Willa. Hmm, Amy says, maybe they're right. Amy scribbles with her pencil and doodles with her crowns. She glues beads to the paper and some to her hair. Bits of dragons emerge, dragons with shiny green scales, dragons with leathery wings. They look great. They look just like the dragons in Miss Mary's book, but none of them work. None of them feel quite right. These dragons are not the dragons Amy wanted to make. You guys can see here all the different dragons that Amy has drawn, and maybe some of them look like the dragons that you were imagining too. Time to clean up, says Miss Mary. I'm not done cries Amy. The rest of the class put their dragons on the show and tell table, but there's nothing from Amy, nothing at all. Willa and Sam come over after school, but Amy can't even smile. Oh dear, says Amy's grandma. Why the sad face? So Amy tells her. 
Her grandma gets a twinkle in her eye. Come, she says, let me tell you a story. And if you've read other Amy Wu books already, you know that Amy's kitty here is one of her best friends too. And kitty is eating a bow. She tells them about dragons that bring down the rain, dragons that are wise and just, dragons that fly without wings. And we can see here that the dragons in Amy's grandma story look kind of different from the ones in Miss Mary's book. Amy runs to the attic. She remembers where she got the idea for her dragon. She pulls out something red and yellow, something with a big fat snout and golden horns. A dragon, gasps Sam and Willa. A dragon, agrees Amy. Amy's grandma puts on the costume's head and Amy puts on the tail. Together, they dance down the attic steps and roar through the house. Maybe you can bring it to school, says Sam. Please, please bring it to school, begs Willa. Hmm, says Amy. She thinks about the dragons in Miss Mary's book. She thinks about the dragons in Grandma's story. Bringing this dragon to class would be great. But there's something missing something to make the dragon Amy's. After Sam and Willa go home, Amy begins the plan. She shows her sketches to her family. Will you help me? She asks. They measure out fabric and cut it into shape. They carve a cardboard frame and fasten the cloth. Amy knots together three silk scarves. Then she adds some beads and some glitter, and a little more glitter, just because. Ready? asks Grandma. Amy takes a deep breath. <sighs> Ready, she says. Amy comes to school with a big paper bag. The other children gather around. Is it your dragon? asks Willa. Show us, cries Sam. Amy puts on the dragon's head. She invites Willa and Sam beneath the dragon's tail. Together, they dance through the classroom and roar between the desks. Everybody laughs. Miss Mary cheers so hard she can't even breathe. Amy's dragon is red and yellow. It has a big fat snout and golden horns. It has enormous green wings and a tail of three silk scarves and glitter and beads, lots of glitter. It works splendidly. It feels just right. It is exactly the dragon Amy wanted to make. And you guys can see how proud she is of it here and all her friends cheering for her. So now I wanted you guys to sort of pull back into mind the dragon that you were thinking about before I started reading the story and compare it to this Western dragon here. Were you thinking about something that resembles a Western dragon? These usually have big leathery wings like the ones in Miss Mary's book. They often breathe fire and are said to be really greedy and love treasure. But maybe your dragon look more like this. This is an Eastern dragon. They usually don't have wings. Their horns look like stag horns and they have long, thin, snake-like bodies. In stories, they're often said to be really intelligent and to control the rain. Or maybe your dragon didn't look exactly like either kind of dragon. Maybe it looked like a mix or a little bit of both. When I was little, and here's a photo of me when I was a kid about Amy's age, I love both Eastern and Western dragons. And in fact, you can see really, if you look really, really hard, you can see like a little bit of a painting of an Eastern dragon along with some Chinese characters that I wrote when I was little. Um, and I love both Eastern and Western dragons because I heard lots of stories about them. Um, I read lots and lots of books and in most of the books that I read, uh, I learned a lot about Western dragons, but I also heard lots of stories from my parents and they told me all about Eastern dragons. 
So I guess um, to learn a little bit more about how I came up with the idea for Amy Wu and the Patrick Dragon, you have to learn a little bit more about me. Um, so here's me, and here are some pictures of my parents a long time ago, back when I was really young. And in fact, that is me as a baby with very spiky hair sitting on top of my mom's lap when I was a baby. Um, and I was born here in the United States, but my parents are born in China and they immigrated over to the US um, really shortly before I was born. So when I grew up, um, I not only, like I said, read lots of books um, about Western dragons, but I also learned lots of stories about Eastern dragons from my parents. And I was surrounded by Chinese culture. I you know, ate lots of Chinese food at home. Um, we celebrated Chinese festivals. And in fact, I was the one who had to teach my parents a lot about uh, American traditions, like leaving cookies out for Santa, or the fact that you know, when you lose a tooth, the tooth fairy comes and you know, gives you a little bit of change for it. My parents didn't know these stories and these traditions um, because they'd grown up in another country. So when I was little, it was often my responsibility to introduce them to to you know, Western and American things, um, while they introduced me to Chinese traditions and Chinese stories. And so sometimes when I was little, I kind of felt like I was sort of caught between these two worlds. It's very, you know, Chinese world and with all these like, you know, family members that I still had in China and all the festivals and the food that I ate, but also this very American world. You know, I grew up in an area that didn't have a lot of other Chinese Americans. Um, and I felt like, you know, I wanted to fit in with my friends. And of course, I had a lot of likes um, that were very traditionally American. I like, you know, Christmas and pumpkin pie and french fries and things like that. So sometimes I grew up feeling sort of caught in the middle of all these things. But at the same time, I knew that I didn't want to let go of my Chinese culture. I loved this part of my life. I loved going back to China and visiting my family there and eating all this delicious food and learning about where my parents had grown up. And as I got a little older, I realized that, you know, these two different aspects of my personality and my history are kind of like Eastern dragons and Western dragons and that they are different, um, but neither one is better than the other. And it's really cool to know about both and to have both in their, your life. And that, in fact, um, having both these things is what made me special and unique um, and able to you know know a little bit more about the world so i guess that's one of the main reasons that i wanted to write you know amy Wu and the patrick dragon was to talk about how you know a lot of us have different aspects to ourselves and different aspects that make up our personalities and then how that's something to be celebrated and that's something that makes you unique you know maybe not everybody comes from two different cultures or something like that but maybe there are other parts of you that are different you know maybe you have a sport that you really love. And that's a really important part of who you are and your personality, but that's not all that you are. Maybe you are great at basketball, but you also really love art. And those are sort of two different worlds that you're also going in between two, but that, you know, come together and make you really awesome. So now I've talked a little bit about the idea for, you know, why I wanted to write Amy Wu and the Patrick Dragon and how I got the idea. But there is still a long way to go between having an idea for a book and having the book actually come out into the world. So I want to talk a little bit about that process, um, because like I said at the beginning, when I was little, I had no idea how books were made. Um, and the more I learn about it, the cooler I think it is. So I did want it to go into a little bit. So to go into how I wrote and why I wrote Amy Wu in the Patrick Dragon, we actually have to go back in time a little bit to the first Amy Wu book because the Amy Wu series is a series um, and there are actually four books now and the Patrick Dragon is the second one. But back when I first got the idea for Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow, which is the first book, I had no idea if I would even be able to make this one picture book. Um, by that point, I'd already written five books for older readers, like middle schoolers and high schoolers, but I'd never made a picture book. So I was really nervous about trying it out. 
but I had this one idea that wouldn't leave me alone. And it was about a little Chinese American girl trying to make the world's most perfect bow. Um, and if you don't know what a bow is, I have lots of pictures here as examples. They're this Chinese or, you know, often, honestly, all over Asian, like snack. And um, sometimes they're really fluffy on the outside, like the ones in Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow. And sometimes they are really had this really thin outside, almost like a dumpling. Um, and there can be filled with lots of different things like meats or sweets or vegetables. Um, and if you make them just right and you pinch, pinch, pinch them just right, they have these beautiful pleats on top like this. Um, but if you're not so good at it, then they can look more like this. They can sort of burst open in the steamer or look really lumpy, bumpy. And I remember when I was a kid, I was always so frustrated whenever I made bow with my parents because their bow looked so perfect and so great um, and mine did not. So I really wanted to write this book about a little girl um, struggling to make the world's most perfect bow. But um, it took a long time to get there, you know, just like Amy struggling to make the perfect bow, I struggled to write the perfect book. And it took many, many drafts before I got there. But even after I was finally happy with the words and the story that I'd written, um, I was still missing something, something really important. Um, because obviously, to have a picture book, you can't just have the words, you have to have an illustrator, um, or an artist who makes all the pictures. And I was really lucky to be introduced to Charlene Chua, who is the illustrator for all of the Amy Wu books. She has been so amazing from the very beginning. And here you can see some early sketches that she made of Amy's mom and dad and her grandma um, and Amy herself. And Charlene adds so many great touches to Amy's story, including, like I pointed out, Amy's kitten, who actually was never written to be a part of Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow. Charlene added her all on her own. Um, and now she is one of my favorite parts of the book. And I know she, uh, the kitty is also lots of other people's favorite parts. And I always make sure to include him in every single book now going forward. Um, Charlene is amazing. She takes my ideas and and my not so great doodles, like you can see over here, my idea of what Amy's dragon should look like. And she transforms it into something awesome and beautiful that can be in the final book. So Charlene and I have actually, like I said, made four Amy Wu books together now. And um, the fourth one doesn't have a cover yet. So there's only three here. And we hope to make lots and lots more. Um, but right now, like I said, we're still talking about the second one, Amy Wu and the Patrick Dragon. Um, and so, you know, if we go back to our story, I just written Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow. Um, and we just got it illustrated. We got it out in the world. And we were so excited because people seemed to be enjoying it. Um, and they came to me and they said, hey, you should write like a second Amy Wu book. And I loved that idea. I think series are awesome. Who doesn't love series and getting to read more books about the same character? I wanted Amy to be somebody like Fancy Nancy or Olivia or Pete the Cat or Pete Alicia, someone who um, we can follow along for story after story. So I said, yes, definitely. I want to write more Amy Wu books. But I knew that I needed something really special to follow up the first book. So that sort of brings us all the way back around to this picture of me um, and this painting that I made back when I was about Amy's age. I stumbled across this photograph one day um, and it just gave me the inspiration for the second book. Like I said, this idea of Eastern dragons and Western dragons and how they can represent different sides of you. Um, and from Amy, the different parts of her culture and how they come together to make her uniquely her. And I'm so happy that it this book is now out in the world and that so many kids like you guys have read it and, you know, had it read to them and made all these awesome projects based off of Amy and her story. Um, it's always really, really exciting to see a book that you've written and spent so much time on out in the world and people enjoying it. Um, and that, I think, is the end. Oops. That is the end. So I will stop my share if I know how to do that. There you go. <laughs> Thank you uh, so yeah. much. That was so interesting. But now I'm super hungry. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, uh, so we're going to open it up to questions for the folks who are on the, the Zoom right now. And it looks like, let me move this over so I can read it. Uh, Alina Wang is asking, what is it like working with an illustrator and having them bring your, your story to life? Yeah. So like I said, it's been really awesome. I mean, Charlene and I chat all the time over the internet. Um, and I just think it's really cool because you have this idea of the story and what it might look like, but it's always like having somebody else there to like add this like new touch or this new spin on things that like you didn't even imagine. Um, and that's just really, really awesome. I mean, the, the book wouldn't be anything like it is without Charlene and all of her work on it. So it's really, really amazing to get to work with someone else. Okay, it looks like Amanda has a question. Um, what other adventures do you see Amy going on? Yeah, so the next book, which is called Amy Wu and the Warm Welcome, is actually coming out May 3rd. And um, each of the Amy Wu books is based off of some small aspect of my childhood. So Amy Wu and the Warm Welcome is um, sort of pulls from experiences that I had when I was a kid. Um, and like I mentioned, I was often one of like very few or the only kid in my grade or even my whole school that was like Chinese American and, and spoke uh, Mandarin. Um, and once or twice in my childhood, I did have like a student, you know, come new to the school who had just um, immigrated from China with their family. And it either didn't speak any English yet or only spoke a little bit of English. Um, and because, you know, like I said, I was one of the only other students who spoke Mandarin, often teachers would be like, oh, hey, can you help welcome them to our class? Can you sort of act as translator while they're settling in? Um, so Amy Win the Warm Welcome is likewise about Amy, um, Amy's class getting joined by a boy who's just immigrated from China and, and her experience is trying to make him feel welcome. Oh, that's awesome. And we have, uh, Kat has a question. How long does it take you to write a book? Yeah, that really depends. I think it, it, the most variability is probably with um, a picture book because it's so often about like the flash of inspiration and then figuring out how to get it to fit in the book. Like, you know, a picture book is, might seem like it's easy in some ways. And in some ways it's sure, like it's easier to write like a, 500 or 700 word picture book than like a 70,000 word, like, you know, novel for, for older folks. But at the same time, you know, the, the story that you need to fit in there sometimes can be even harder to fit into such like a, a small space. You know, you have about like 28 to like 30 spreads and you still have to tell a whole story with like a beginning, middle and an end and some sort of character development. And sure, it's simpler than, you know, in like um, a longer story, but it still has to be there. Um, and, you know, you're talking to like a very specific audience that you want to, to understand the story and to enjoy the story. So I would say from idea to finishing point, it could take like weeks to, to months, depending on how satisfied I am and how many drafts that I have to go through. Um, the whole process with publishing, I would say probably takes like a year and a half to two years, just because I have to, you know, I have to write the book and then it goes through my um, editor and then, um, it goes to the illustrator, like with the Amy Wu books, you know, we already have Charlene on board. So that's a little bit more streamlined. We just like have to fit into her schedule. Um, and then she obviously has to draw the pictures and then their edits on the pictures and everything like that. So the whole process probably takes about like a year and a half to two years. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's way longer than I thought. <laughs> um, so Jordan is asking, how do books get published? Yeah, so it depends on the type of book, but generally um, somebody, a writer, comes up with an idea and writes the book, and then you have to get it to an editor who are folks who work at these publishing houses, 
um, and they're the ones who sort of pick the books that they're interested in. Um, and then they sort of seek permission from their publishing houses about whether or not they're allowed to buy this book. And then after they have bought the book, then the publishing house sort of puts up all the funds and everything and, you know, prints the books and things like that um, and gets the book out into the world um, and in hopes that people will buy it and then earn them back all the money that they put into yeah. making the book. <laughs> Well, I'm sure they're doing very well with your books. <laughs> um, uh, Alina has another question. Um, oh, I think you've already answered that one. So I'm going to go. She has another question too, though. Do you go back and forth between writing for younger and older readers? And how do you manage that? Yeah, so I've only ever written for like what we would call like children's literature. So um, the oldest age segment that I've written for is like young adults, so, which is usually considered like 13 through 18, um, though obviously like we have many older folks reading them as well. Um, I do go back and forth a little bit. Um, like right now, I go back and forth a lot between working on picture books and working on middle grades, um, which are for like eight through 12. I do think that it can be a little bit easier to just like work on one thing at a time because they do have like different tones. Um, picture books and, and books for like older kids tend to be a little bit more separate. So it's a little easier to just like shift because they are so different. But I could see how like going between writing a middle grade and a young adult novel might be a little bit weird because you're trying to shift between a 12 year old and like an 18 year old, which is obviously yeah. a big shift, but like, when you're writing it, it might be too easy to be like, ooh, that's like, that's a little too 12 year old for this like 16 year old, you know, to be thinking or something like that. Um, so it can be kind of tricky, but I, I find that really great way to get into the right mind space is also to like read books in that genre rap while I'm writing. Um, so if I know that I'm going to start, you know, working on like a picture book or a middle grade, I like start pulling out my to read list of all the things that, you know, I'm behind. I'm always behind on my to read list. So it's always a good <laughs> idea to start, you know, reading books in that genre to get back into that headspace. That's awesome. Thank you. And so uh, Peg is asking, how old were you when you wrote your first your first book? Wow, I was really young. <laughs> I was a huge reader when I was little, and I knew really early on that I wanted to be a writer and I wanted to write books, and it was my goal to get published one day. So I probably wrote my first, I started writing my first book, which I never finished when I was like 12 or something. Um, and I think I finished my first novel when I was probably like 17 or 18. Um, and then that novel never got published, but that was the first one I finished from beginning to <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Karen is asking, what do you do when you're not writing? Yeah, so I love lots of different artsy things. So um, I do a lot of drawing and painting, although I'm not as good as Charlene. So that's why I don't illustrate my own books. Um, I don't know. I watch a lot of movies. I really love to travel, which unfortunately I haven't been able to do like everybody else the last couple of years. But I love to get back into that and watch a lot of movies, things like that. Oh. Did you draw that dragon that was the like the sample dragon? I did. To show, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that was pretty good. <laughs> I thought it was good. <laughs> um, Amanda's asking, do any of your book, do any of the books you write come from your? Oh, you already answered that your own childhood. Um, so let's go back to Cat. Why don't you illustrate your own books? <laughs> uh, I mean, one, it's just so much fun to work with somebody else, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know. I, I don't think I trust myself as quite good of an illustrator to illustrate my own books. I think you need, like, especially, like, for children's books, like, so much exuberance in your art and such, a, like, a great style and so much energy. And I don't know. I, I am very happy to leave that part to Charlene. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does anyone else have any other questions? I think you did such a good job in your presentation of um, <laughs> answering all the questions that we were thinking about. There's a lot of questions that were posted that you had already answered throughout the presentation. Oh, great. So that was so wonderful um, speaking with you today. Um, one more chance, guys, if anybody else has a question.
Oh, there's a question in the room. <laughs> okay. What? Oh, what's your favorite childhood book? My favorite childhood book. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. I remember when I was like 12 or so, my favorite childhood book was The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. Oh, um, I love Golden Compass. Book. Yeah. <laughs> and then I remember a picture book. Gosh, I can't even, I can't remember the title. It's like, it's like, it was like the the mouse and the strawberry and the bear or something there was like a story about like a like a straw like a mouse that like really wanted a strawberry and you like and there was like a bear who really wanted a strawberry and then her <laughs> friends in the end I don't know it'd be it'd be a better story if I remember the name I can remember I can see like the cover of it um but that was my favorite picture book <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so familiar I'm gonna think about that after we probably hang up <laughs> Well, we really loved having your book to read to the kids for Read Across Lincoln. I think it had such a great impact. They thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it was such a joy to read and the kids absolutely loved it. So we thank you so much for being here with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. And yeah, thanks so much for choosing Amy Moon and the Patrick Dragon for your book. Um, it was so awesome to hear that it reached so many kids um, and I hope they all enjoy it. I'm sure they will. Like they've already been telling us how much they enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kat. All right. Thank you. Hope you all have a good Bye. day for coming. I hope you enjoyed this special author visit from Kat Zhang, which was part of our 2022 Read Across Lincoln program. Read Across Lincoln aims to bring our whole community together around books and literacy. In 2022, our goal was to put a copy of Kat Zhang's Amy Wu and the Patchwork Dragon in the hands of every first grader in Lincoln. We partnered with the Friends of the Lincoln Public Library and our local schools to make that happen. And in March, we distributed over 700 copies of the book to Lincoln and Western Placer Unified Schools. We know that having books in your home leads to lifelong success. An international study found that adults with a high school education who grew up around 80 or more books have the same core literacy skills as college graduates who didn't. That means that even a few shelves of books in your home can set your children up to have the reading, math, and digital literacy skills that they need to navigate the essential tasks of life. And those literacy skills lead to better jobs, better health, and more engagement with our community through their whole lives. That's one reason why the Lincoln Public Library offers events and programs that provide books for children and teens to keep. All year long, we give away books at events like Read Across Lincoln, our summer reading program, our monthly Read to a Dog program, free teen book giveaway day, free comic book day, Die November, and more. Through the support of the Friends of the Lincoln Public Library, we work to build home libraries so that every Lincoln child can grow up with the skills that they need to thrive. Growing up around books shows that reading and learning are valued and they give children plenty of material to practice reading with. Plus, homes with books tend to engage in other literacy boosting activities, like reading as a family or visiting your local public library. So check out our calendar to see all of the exciting events that are coming up, including ones where you can pick up a free book. And I look forward to seeing you in the library soon. Say the yeah. Good job, what great listeners and great tours too. Good job, everybody. You know what I really love about this book, too? It has a craft. Oh, Why yeah. you can make your own dragon? Guess what? You all are going to take it to take home your very own copy of this book. And it gets to stay with you forever. It does not have to go back to the library. Yeah. Yeah.